It seems like the Knicks were on the right track just a couple of years ago, headlined by a young and talented franchise player, Chris Dasperzingas, the unicorn. The Knicks usually don't get anything right, but they drafted a gem in the 2015 draft. But not only did he tear his ACL in 2017, he skipped out on his exit interview, which sparked speculation that he wasn't happy with the franchise. It was reported that him and his brother met with the Knicks at the beginning of this year, and he expressed his problems with the franchise, and next thing you know, he was traded to the Dallas Mavericks, just like that. But that move allowed the potential for the Knicks to possibly sign two primetime free agents this summer. And with the Knicks actually doing the right thing and tanking, the Knicks fans had a dream scenario of KD, Kyrie, and Zion. There were a lot of respected reporters and insiders that believed KD was going to New York. But it was to the other team in New York, the Brooklyn Nets. The worst case scenario happened, and the Knicks fans are left with what could have been. Now, once again, the Knicks will experience another painful and slow rebuild. The Knicks do have a few young players to be hopeful about in Mitchell Robinson, Kevin Knox, Dennis Smith Jr., Alonzo Trier, and this year's third overall pick, R.J. Barrett. He's not the Duke player they wanted, but it's the Duke player they have. Some experts believe R.J. Barrett could be a superstar. Others believe he's just another guy. I believe he has the mindset to be a great player, but I'm not so sure he has the skill set to become that great player. Barrett is very good in transition, using his chains of speed and footwork to avoid defenders. Coach K put him in position where he can get downhill and either pull up from mid-range or finish at the rim. I'm not sure he has the handle and quickness to consistently get by his defenders. I believe he will struggle with his outside shot early in his career at least. He only shot 66% from the free throw line which isn't a good sign. The Knicks will be expecting him to develop into a James Harden type, but he might be just another Andrew Wiggins with a more aggressive mindset. The Knicks last year's first round pick Kevin Knox had an uneven rookie year, which included a lot of injuries, but he's still only 19 years old and was the third youngest player in the NBA last season. There are still reasons to be optimistic about his future. He did show flashes of being an impact player, but his rookie year was full of growing pains. He didn't give great effort on defense, and he only shot 36% from the field. Having two of your top talents in Knox and Barrett not being good shooters is not a good sign for success moving forward. And their acquisition from midseason, Dennis Smith Jr., is another young player who isn't necessarily efficient from the field. His highlight reel dunks are great and will get the crowd off his feet. And his numbers he put up are good on paper, but shooting 41% from the field and 29% from three is not going to cut it in today's NBA. There's a lot of work to be done and a lot of progress that needs to be made with these three players, and the Knicks will be relying on them the most. I could see a scenario where Coach Fizdale insert a more steady and mature point guard in Alfred Payton into the starting lineup. But the two biggest surprises from last season was the play of Mitchell Robinson and Alonzo Trier. Robinson can be a serious impact player and could be the most important player on the Knicks' current roster. He set the Knicks franchise record with blocks in a single game by a rookie with nine blocks, and he also set a rookie record for the most consecutive games with a block. His 2.4 blocks per game were the most by a rookie since Tim Duncan in 1997. Robinson will always be a lob threat with his athletic ability and long arms. He played like a top 10 pick, and his decision to leave Western Kentucky before the season started was a blessing for the Knicks as they selected him in the second round. Alonzo Trier is a player who can simply get buckets. He might not be able to do anything else, but he can put the ball in the hole. Coach Dave Fisdale gave him the nickname Iso Zo. He proved to be a spark plug coming off the bench at times and provided instant offense. After swinging and missing big in free agency, the Knicks decided to sign a million power forwards this past offseason. Julius Randle, Bobby Portis, Taj Gibson, and Marcus Morris. 
Now they all can play two positions, but it was a big letdown for the Knicks to use that space on essentially four power forwards. And being that Kevin Knox's best position may be the four spot, these signings could affect his growth as a player, and players like Morris and Randall could take away a lot of key minutes from Knox. Barrett, Robinson, Smith, and Knox will need their fair share of minutes to progress this season. Of the four power forwards, signing Julius Randle was the only good move in my opinion. Randle will have all the opportunities in the world to put up crazy numbers for the Knicks. In the final two months of last season, he averaged around 24 points on 17 shots, shooting 50% from the field and 36 from three. With this improvement as an outside shooter, his all-around offensive game is on the rise. His defense did improve, but his off-the-ball defense needs a lot of work. I don't believe Knox or Barrett will be the scores that Randall needs next season, which will put a lot of pressure on him to score more, and he may take bad shots from time to time. I have the Knicks winning more games than last season, but not by that much. They have a mixture of young players and veterans, but I don't believe they have enough proven scores on the team to compete on a night-to-night -night basis. I have the Knicks finishing with a 24-58 and record, 13th in the Eastern Conference. Another 50 loss season is more than likely going to happen again for the Knicks, but they should see some progress from certain young players to feel good about their future.